Hello, this is David Wolf. Today I'll be showing you an exciting new technology that PTC has been developing over the last 10 years. This uh, new technology is what I refer to as ad hoc reporting. It was originally introduced in Windchill 9.1 and uh, we've now coined the phrase report builder for the actual name. You'll notice from my home page uh, I have a series of reports and these reports, the queries, have all been written across the entire platform in Windchill depending on product development, quality, manufacturing, uh, any type of projects that you do or planning. All those queries have been written across every single aspect of Windchill and the end user doesn't have to know the object model in order to run these queries so it really does put the power back in the user's hand. First thing that I did uh, is click on the nonconformance report and I'll just bring this up briefly and show you a little bit about the ad hoc reporting that exists within the report builder itself. Here I can see the name, the number, the record ID, different dates, uh, we have category trees, wide variety of different criteria that can be run and quickly generate you know whatever information that we need in this ad hoc report. It displays the results of that. You can reorder any of this information and then also export out to a wide variety of different formats. So if I were to close that and take a look at a new nonconformance, you can see what I'm talking about with the one-to-one -one mapping of the number, the name, who requested it, date filed open, all that information that you collect through a nonconformance or say a complaint or a kappa on the quality side all those queries are already written for you now if we look down in the planning section you have different workflow tasks and items uh, project management or programs uh, again a wide variety of different reports across the entire enterprise you know, you don't have to know the object model, but you just have to uh, link up that different information. And it's really useful on the quality side for looking at as reported versus the uh, actual investigation codes. First thing that I'm going to do here is scroll down, and you can see under saved reports here, we'll go look at an existing report where I've defined criteria that I want specific for my own individual report and when I choose this report it auto runs that criteria looking for number name you know whatever I've chosen to bring back uh, I can sort these ascending or descending and then turn on any of the data uh, that I'm filtering for I already showed you under actions how you can export to a wide variety of for formats Let's take a look at one that I've already generated in the background here, which is the HTML version. You can see uh, it's, again, generated that and output it just like I had in, in the prior session. And now I can go through and look at what kind of categories of nonconformances we have, um, specific categories for a manufacturing site or a different product, and any other detailed information. Behind that you'll see is a Kappa report that I've run, kind of looking at the different subject types, whether it was a supplier, product, personnel, maybe a documentation related Kappa, and then where the source was, you know, whether it's audit finding or management review, the site, the part, we can also have documents or uh, any other pertinent information related to the Kappa. The last report that I'll show here is an audit report and so this audit report utilizes both the project and program management and the capability to template audit projects and then cross that with corrective action and any other audit uh, findings in the system. So you can see here from a yearly perspective I can look over 2011 at the various quarters and see what type of audit we were doing maybe a specific section of ISO or an area or functionality in the company. Uh, we're running in sequence with a master audit checklist. I can clearly see what the finding of that audit was, the corrective action assigned to it, 
root cause and we can have multi-mode root failures as well as the effectiveness that was carried out in order to validate that the uh, kappa actually worked correctly. So that's a little bit about this new ad hoc reporting capability that you can see clearly is uh, accessible right from your home page, really giving a lot of power to the end user. Now I'm going to switch over. Uh, we do have this capability in most of the accepted and widely used browsers like Internet Explorer, Firefox, and I'm going to go into Google Chrome now. The reason that I'm going into Google Chrome is I want to run an existing saved report here and show you uh, a ex really exciting new capability that's coming out in Windchill 10.1 or March of 2012. And this is the charts and graphs capability. Also what uh, a lot of people commonly refer to as watchdogs to be able to put a data monitor on an existing supplier or a high risk part or process in the organization and actually look real time and have an alert sent to you on that. What I'll be showing today is uh, this people and places chart. It's just one that we have in our R&D server. Uh, it's gone through and generated this report. It's looking for name, created, the gender, phone number, postal code. This is mainly just for uh, demonstration purposes. But you can imagine, you know, keeping track of who's inputting the information is very critical to the organization. So once we have this information, I can hit the chart icon. And the first thing that I'm going to go do is look for the specific name of who's putting this in. Uh, we can look for a horizontal or vertical bar chart, a pie chart, Pareto, line chart, and for this first specimen, let's look at a pie chart. I'm going to show the data labels. Uh, I can also show a legend. You notice I can filter through between 3 or 5 or 20 values. Really easy to use and uh, I'm going to bump up the font size to medium. Once I get that sufficient, I'll go ahead and capture that right in the report and dock it in here. I'm going to also add another Pareto now. So we'll go through and look at, say, a, a country. And this time I'm going to choose the Pareto option. And specifically, let's go look for the top five in the Pareto. Configure a few things, showing some grids and labels and different percentage figures. Um, so you can see how interactive and easy it is for me to go through and configure not only the ad hoc report that we're pulling back this information for, but also any types of charts and graphs that I want to show to management or anybody else within the organization. Here you can see as I hover above the different pie slices, it gives me the percentages and the similar type of interactiveness on the charting side with the Pareto. So here you can see Again, we put the power back in the user's hands and made it extremely easy to go in and configure and share best practice reports throughout the organization. Thank you.